It is now time for Motion to Adjourn with MP Chris Famous, Famous and Dwayne Robinson, JP. And good afternoon, Brother Dwayne. Good afternoon. Brother Dawn. What's up? What's up, guys? And nice to see you guys in the studio. It's been like six months. Since you guys have both been in here, <laughs> no, so, not, not that not, long. Not, 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 uh, four yeah. months. We've been doing better lately. Yeah, I four think. months. Then. That's four the months. damn open meters. They love to stretch us. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Four months. <laughs> oh man, that fish was just big. <laughs> a little <a> bream. <laughs> yeah, a little bit better. A little yeah, bit better this bit. last few months. Yeah. yeah. And good We're afternoon. Working on it. Good yeah. afternoon to the people of Bermuda. And today, we have two special guests. One we will be calling from overseas. And I have my lovely daughter visiting us from Jaliel, England. <laughs> Say hi to the people. Good evening. Tell me your name. Tahira. Yeah. Visiting from Jaliel, England. See, I'm going to catch up, famous. I, I have one. <laughs> you're not going to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> Unless your wife's prepared to have another, have another five children. <laughs> no, I think one more. That's it. <laughs> anyway, so... Today we have uh, a guest who we are going to be calling Miss Nyota from Montserrat mm -hmm. and she will be, she is the president of the Montserrat Public Service Association, basically civil servants union. Okay. And we're going to be speaking to her about what's going on in Montserrat and some of the stuff uh, that the union is facing, the workers and the union are facing there right now. And after that conversation, we'll be having a little open mic again. Dwayne? Yeah, people like that. How did it go last week? How did you <laughs> went last week? Um, I, you know, I think that, uh, <laughs> I think we used a very emotive topic to start it off. It off and maybe we should have a, a two-hour show for, for something like that. Mm. I think it went well, though. I think it went well. Well, I appreciate <coughs> two callers that call call in. Um... As you say, we're trying to, as, as we go into our, we're in our third year. So as we go, as we progress, you know, we have to do things in different formats. And sometimes mm -hmm. we have the open mic and sometimes we have guests. Yeah. And today we have a little bit of both. Next week is what? what what's, what's next week's date? Next week, the 22nd. So somebody in her suggested we have a little festive sort of um, event next week. So, I don't know. Yeah, I know, right up to the tail end, and that, that's the eve of the year. The, the eve of the eve of the year. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, that's, that's you know, m most importantly, what we want to say to you people of Bermuda is thank you for your support over the last three years. You know, we may have missed one or two episodes. Okay, maybe four or five. But, you know, for three years, we've been here yep. religiously every week. Helping to inform the people of Bermuda. Definitely. So we have our guests on the radio, and I would allow you, Dwayne, to welcome our guests. Hi, right, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Famous. Yes, that's Mr. actually that's my co host, that's uh, Mr. Robinson on the radio. Okay. Okay. Yes. So, how are you, Miss Nayota? Did I pronounce that yourself? right? I'm sorry? Did I pronounce that correctly? It's President Mayeda. President Mo, Mo Care in your mouth. President Mo Care. Nayota Mo Care. That's it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he's pulling my leg. How are you? Thank you for joining us today. Yes, thank you so much. I'm more than happy to be on Territories Talk. A pleasant good afternoon to lovely Bermuda on all those who are listening via radio, social media. One session both at home and in the diaspora and everyone who is tuned in. Yes, thank you. And just um, for the listening audience, would you mind just letting us know a few things about yourself and uh, your career and your background? Okay, so yes, I am Nayota Malk here. I am the president of the Mantra Civil Service Association. I am a public servant. I am currently the director of Postal Services. I've been a trade unionist for the last 18 years, so to speak. Five years so far as president. 
and I enjoy working with people, looking after people on a whole, ensuring that what is expected should happen, because that's all part of trade unionism. It is it's very, very, very important that we look out for our membership and that we ensure that they are not living below expectations and they receive value for money options as much as possible. So I've been so far 25 years valuable service to the government of Montserrat in various positions. And I just love people. I want to make sure that everything is good. I serve on various boards representing government of Montserrat and also the union, such as the Labour Advisory Board, the Montserrat Social Security Fund, the Montserrat Mediation Committee, various public service reform initiatives, the Montserrat Land Development Authority, and so on. So I'm a patriotic Montserratian. I enjoy spending quality time with my family. Okay, yeah. thank you, Tap. For those who don't know, tell us a little bit about Montserrat itself. Okay, so Montserrat. A brief history. We are the most precious and valuable dots on the map and part of the Lesser Antilles. Located in the Caribbean Sea among a chain of islands, we are smack in the middle of Antigua, Guadalupe, St. Kitts, and Nevis. Access for us outside of, the, of, outside of Montserrat is via Antigua, which is approximately 15 minutes via plane and hun, an hour and a half via sea, ferry. We are a British overseas territory, just like Bermuda. Prior to 1995, we were basically self-dependent, owning our own money. Tourism was booming. Some thriving agricultural markets, such as fish, meat, local provisions. In 1995, many would have known that our Super Hills volcano became active. Our population then was about 12,000 strong. Now in 2022, just about 4,005, as many persons migrated mostly to the United Kingdom, USA, and other Caribbean islands due to this volcanic activity, which claimed many of our lands, our homes on the southern side of the island, which was then approximately 13 and a half square miles, very, very small. We now occupy the northern side, basically half of what we enjoyed previously. So we also made, we also lost our main town, Plymouth, and structures such as the airport, seaport, hospital, rice factory, and electronic factories that employed many of our citizens back then. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. <clears throat> um, just but we are, but we are resilient. That's good. Yeah, that's one thing that um we we in the islands have in common. Yeah, and I I just. I just wanted to kind of um, ask you a bit about, you know, uh, the outlook after that, um, you know, horrific thing. What is the outlook uh, of Montserrat from the, the people there as far as the future goes? In terms of the volcano or what's happening locally with our membership? Um, well, let's let's um, speak about the, the volcano a little bit more and then go into the, the membership as well. Okay, so like I said previously, our volcano is no more, is not, is not active anymore, so to speak, but we still cannot access the southern side of the island anymore. However, we were able to tap into the resources, you know, for aggregate. We do some export, some of the material is used locally. And then now, we are, because of the declining population, our civil servants is approximately just a little over 900. We own approximately 75% as membership. However, we also have members who work within the statutory bodies, such as the Monster Social Security Fund, the Financial Service Commission, the Land Development Authority, Monster Community College, well, Monster National Trust, as well as some retired persons have maintained their membership as well. The Monster Civil Service Association, it is the largest union. We also have the Monster Union of Teachers, the Nurses Association, 
the Palace Wealthy Association, so we have approximately about four. But it's worthy to note that most persons or most members of these other unions are also members of the MCSC. Mm-hmm. So what? What they? So they were the members of two unions, you would say. I'm sorry. You, so they are members of two unions. Yes, basically. Okay. Okay. So what? So M- we have the largest union. So MCSA what? is like what a more uh, like an umbrella union. Correct. Okay. Okay. Correct. So what? Like like most of the countries around the world, I shouldn't say like, I'm going to let that's a closed end question. <laughs> Many countries around the world, and especially those of us in the Caribbean that are, have to, or the Caribbean or the Atlantic as some would like to say, um, we have to import our goods, everything we eat, I would say 90% of what we eat, we import. What is the situation in Montserrat with the cost of living right now? Okay, so the cost of living in Montserrat is very high due to the fact that the economic conditions are not stable. I just said we do import 95% of approximately what we use. The, and it even got worse since the volcano because we, although we push agriculture, if our spending power is declined, then how can we purchase? So... The cumulative rate of inflation as at 2021 was stated as 21.6 percent, and for 2022 alone at 5 percent. In addition, customs duties for everything we bring in is high because freight is also added in the calculation, and our access options is very much in disarray at the moment. We have a very small airport with two airlines operating, the nine-seater Islanders. Mm-hmm. And another who is present in trying to operate a 19-seater twin auto, but there are several issues presented, presently surrounding that as well. We wanted a ferry, but that was taken away from us in 2020. Now our membership is unable to access affordable transportation in and out of Montserrat, especially during this high season like now, when it's our local Christmas festival. Prices are almost easy, $1,000 to convert it for you, because I know Bermuda use a lot of U.S. That's 370 U.S. dollars in return for just a 15-minute flight. Mm. Sorry, say that again. <coughs> you say that again. 370 U.S. dollars for, for what? Return for a 15-minute flight. So it takes us 15 minutes to, to Antigua, 15 minutes from Antigua. Basically 15 minutes. And 370 U.S. dollars? Three hundred and seventy US dollars, <laughs> right? Mm. And for us, right? And for us, uh, like I said before, we would have lost our hospital. We are still in temporary accommodations in terms of the medical facilities. So, a lot of the medical services are not offered locally. Persons have to travel to Antigua to access these services. So it's expensive already on already low salaries. So. We really need to have that ferry back. It's really, really, really important. And what was the price of the ferry to and from Antigua? The, the ferry was three hundred eighty dollars. So it's like a, that's like a hundred US, hundred and a little bit US. Yeah, just about right. Huh. Which was more affordable because that's a return fare. That's a return fare. And it's, so, and it's all, but, but that was also subsidized by the British government because we are we are now back into into aid because of our circumstances. So approximately how much of your budget is granted from the UK? Um, the majority of it, uh, let me say what, 80%, 70%, but we have to raise a portion of it. We raise it through taxes. Mm-hmm. We raise it through taxes, importation, um, importation, um, Salaries, taxes on salaries, and so on. So we have to raise a portion, mm-hmm. right? But we do offer insurance. I was going back to say we do offer insurance for our membership, but they have to pay up front and then they pay back from the insurance provider, which we go through Nagicor. Uh, some years ago, the government, the union, did negotiate with government, so government pays for the member and the member pay for their dependents. So for me, for example, government pays for me and I will pay for my dependents, whether it may be a 
spouse or child or children. Okay. So currently, there's a, from one understanding, there's a, let me use the right word, sir. There is there's a slight disagreement between the civil servants <laughs> and the and the government at present. Can you mm-hmm. elaborate on that for us? Right. Yes. Yeah. So for several years we have been going through several peer reviews, peer reviews, and nothing has come out of it. So finally, there was some sort of hope that, for example, in 2021, Governor Munstrat, well, through the deputy governor, conducted, prepared a report, and which was presented to the SPDO about basically rectifying some of the anomalies within salaries for some persons like the nurses, teachers, police, there were some inconsistencies with their salaries. So that was supposed to be done. Uh, The report fully captured that the take-home pay for civil servants was way below the livable wage, also that the rate of inflation was constantly rising. It also addressed the anomalies within the system in relation to pay, mostly, in April 2022, the unions were called into a meeting and was told that the 7%, which was which the report proposed, and the correction of the anomalies were not were passed in principle by cabinet, but was not approved by the FCO. And we were told that we will need to follow up with government. So prior to the FCO admission in December, the MCSA wrote to the Premier, the Honorable Joseph Farrell, and the Deputy Governor, and copied in all of the ministers, and the governor on 25th of November 2022 to basically follow up on what was promised and to send a trigger to indicate that we now wanted a 10% increase as things had further deteriorated over the years. A what, a what percentage increase? 10%. So the document proposed a 7%. So we were now asking for 10% because things had gotten worse between the peer review, um, between the presentation in 2021 and what's happening now on the ground with high inflation of prices. So we indicated that we wanted a 10% instead of a 7% increase. The Honorable Premier responded basically that they were still working on fixing these issues and acknowledged that everything was in fact agreed in principle, but there were competing demands on the current, on the current budget and they are still exploring options. Now, this has been way too long. Uh, people are suffering, women and children are falling through the cracks. In the meantime, additionally, the governor, uh, the Honorable Sarah Tucker, during interviews shortly after, indicated that our asking of 10% was unrealistic, which made the membership even more disgruntled. So the, govern- the, the governor, the British governor? Right, the governor. That's, yes. that's the lady that came from? BVI. Yes. Okay. I think I got thought it was BVI. Mm-hmm. Right. So during our short interview, she indicated that our asking of 10% was unrealistic, which made the membership even more disgruntled. Okay, so so just so so I'm let's say so we're all clear. The 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 cabinet, the elected members, the cabinet members of your country agreed to a pay rise. Right. But the FCDO, the the foreign foreign and Commonwealth Development Office, the, the British people said, no, you're not getting no money. That's what we were told. Okay, all right. That's what we were told. All right, okay. Right. So, like I was saying before, the governor, Sarah Tucker, during an interview shortly after I would have issued my letter, indicated that our asking of 10% was unrealistic, which made the membership even more disgruntled. Okay, so... And they had every right to, All right. So what, in what, my opinion. We can go to break and then we come back up, come back and pick this up. Okay. Thank you.
Spend more time with the family during the holiday season this year. Make your holiday shopping experience hassle-free. The Stationery Store and Stationery Store Plus has everything you need all in one convenient location. Educational toys and games, gifts for your parents and friends ranging from all ages. Whether you're into hobbies, crafts, brain teasers, puzzles, art, plus so much more. There's something at the Stationery Store for everyone. Be creative, shop smart at the Stationery Store and Stationery Store Plus. Trust your Christmas packages to mailboxes. We bring them in fast, we make it easy, and we do all the paperwork. And ain't that sweet. Mailboxes. You shop, we ship. You're locked to Power 95, Bermuda's big station at 94.9 FM, a Bermuda Broadcasting Company station. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jasmine Patterson with Bermuda Broadcasting News with a look at the top headlines. Take control of your Butterfield credit card by downloading the Butterfield Card Alerts app. Monitor your spending activity with real-time transaction alerts sent directly to your mobile device. And if your card is lost or stolen, use the app to turn the card off, preventing any further transactions from being processed. Download the app from the Apple Store or Google Play Store today. Customized credit card controls. This is banking by Butterfield. The Bank of NT Butterfield and Sun Limited is licensed to conduct banking business by the Bermuda Monetary Authority. Teen sentenced to 12 years behind bars for manslaughter. 15-year-old boy escapes injury after being robbed at knife point in Sands Parish. An amendment to Bermuda Monetary Authority Act clarifies investment guidelines. You're listening to Bermuda Broadcasting News. 94.9 Bermuda. Hour, 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 95. Now back to Motion to Adjourn with MP Chris Famous and Dwayne Robinson. And welcome back. Are you still with us? Yes, I am. <laughs> right here. Yeah, that's good. Um, before we uh, go back into um, the situation... Could you could you give us and the, the people that are listening just a, a little kind of brief overview of how the government is set up? Has it changed since um, the volcano and the drop of population or like how is it uh, currently functioning? How many MPs, um, if you call them MPs and, you know, just various um, uh, tips and uh, knowledgeable things about it? Okay, yes, the government has changed several times during the volcano, actually. Uh, and some persons would like to say that <laughs> this is a change of government for many times. It lacks stability, but government is actually continuing. So we've had... Uh, so currently, the two parties that are actually reigning, so to speak, we have the MCAP, Movement of Change and Prosperity, who is currently the government, uh, they have they have the majority seat. Then you also have the PDM. So the MCAP is led by our President Premier, Honorable Joseph Farrell, and the PDM which leads leave the opposition, is led by Mr. Paul Lewis. And it so happened that, I should say that both leaders are actually past leaders of the Monster Civil Service Association. Have we seen a trend there, Honorable mm-hmm. President? <laughs> well, let's say everyone who has been president has not run for politics. Oh, this is. That. <laughs> 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 I think she's starting to be a. She's definitely on that trend. Yeah, now. yeah, that was a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, just uh, so has the have the seats remained the same despite the the population drop, or is it less seats now in government? Okay, so prior to the volcanic activity, the, we operated a system where it was constituent. We voted by a constituent, but we no longer do that anymore. It was changed over to a nine-vote party. So when I vote in the election, I actually have nine votes. So it's nine seats. So I actually have nine votes. I can, I can choose to execute all nine. I can choose to only you do one or do, do seven or do two or however I decide to distribute, distribute it. 
Okay, that's that's very interesting. Um, and that system, it's within your constitution, or did that have to be amended? It had to be amended. Okay, it had to be amendments to the the the, the legislation as to how we do carry out our voting system, electoral system. Okay, well, thank you for that. So and there is several parties. Um, so the PDM actually stands for People Democratic Movement. PDM, yes, People Democratic Movement. So those are the two leading parties. Uh, there's one person in opposition who who prior led that party, but uh, the last election he actually ran on his own, who is the previous premier, uh, Honorable Donaldson Romeo. Mm. Was he a, was he a president of uh, the Public Service Association? <laughs> no, as he well? was. No, he wasn't. He actually was, he was never a public servant. He was actually never a public servant. So, to back to the the present day situation. Yes, what you what I'm just trying to make sure I get straight is that the the people that you all elected, some of them who are now sitting in cabinet, agreed to a pay rise of seven percent. In principle. In yeah. principle. And to fix the anomalies okay. within the pay structure. And as we know, the financial situation around the world for most countries have deteriorated, mm -hmm. including the UK. And the now governor, who is appointed by the FCDO, not by the people of Montserrat or any overseas territory, said, said no. Well, her comment was that the 10% was unrealistic. That was her comment. And what was she and, offering? Uh, well, that's the thing. Uh, she didn't offer anything. She just said it's unrealistic. So that, that I said before, that made the membership even more disgruntled. And in my opinion, they had every right. Because Governor Tucker's comment came off as being prejudiced. Because there was no proper, proper investigation, as a matter of fact. She, she misrepresented the fact because she also gave the impression that we asked for 10% across the board, and that was not the case. We know that when we ask for a percentage that is always given on a sliding scale, where those persons who are least paid will receive the highest percentage of the increase. That is all. That always happens. So she, she further misrepresented the fact and indicated that we're asking for it across the board. But it's never given like that. It's always the person at the bottom receiving the majority and those at the top receiving, receiving less. Um, however, if I, if I may follow on, uh, I also sent a follow-up letter to Premier Joseph Farrell, Honorable Joseph Farrell, on the 6th of December. I further indicated that the resolutions were taking much too long the dissatisfaction of the union and highlighted that many governments were offering public servant salary increases. We have seen that in, in, in many areas, in many countries. Uh, there are double salaries, they're getting double salaries for Christmas or tax-free salary. And these are some of the quick options which we indicated that they themselves could also exercise and all we got was a uh, response to that acknowledgement. So... A general meeting was called with the membership, and it was decided that it was time to take action. So we booked a meeting with the FCO team because we knew that during this current aid mission, that no representation was made on our behalf by the government for new money for salary increases or to have the anomaly fixed. So we did a go slow from last Tuesday. We did stick out, and then we did a demonstration last week Thursday, because that's when the meeting took place. So while myself and the vice president, Sister Michelle Castle, while we sat with the SCG team and explained our situation, the rest of the membership, and we were all dressed in black on that day, that was the color, because we were mourning, basically. Uh, persons from the private sector also stood in solidarity with us, and persons gathered at, in front of the governor's office, and they chanted that we wanted 10% salary increase, and that we want it now. And they displayed placards by the vice president and I were presenting to the FCO team. Uh, after that, Premier Farrell 
also emerged from the governor's office. And persons were happy to see him because, I mean, they were, we were in hope because he's our leader of the government. And being a party, you wouldn't need a yes, you would expect that he would represent as well. He may not attempt to address the membership, but they were not satisfied with his responses. However, he did agree to meet with a union, which will take place tomorrow. And nonetheless, he even indicated after <laughs> he also agreed and his comments that we basically should continue striking. And the membership booed him because they were, here is it, government, your government leader of business, a past union member. Why would you make such a comment? Uh, why aren't you willing to, okay, say something? But coming out to the meeting tomorrow, we'll know where we'll go. Let, so let, 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 let me play devil's advocate here for a minute. Mm -hmm. So let's let's take it on the merit that he is a uh -huh. past union president. So he's of the so union. He served as vice president. Uh, and then uh, the then uh, president went on to be a permanent secretary. Mm -hmm. And you, in our legislation for the union, permanent secretaries are not allowed to be active members or hold the executive positions. Uh, uh, so he acted as president for a very for a long time. So let, before let's before he retired. So yes. let's say he was a uh, executive of the union. Mm -hmm. So let's let's I don't know. Say he has a union mindset. Mm -hmm. So he if he made a statement to say continue striking huh. now in the Bermuda context if you had a union president who's a now politician but we have a few has said mm -hmm. get back to work now the people would be like huh. really angered <laughs> now if he's saying continue striking it I, I don't know I'm reading that as his standing in solidarity with the people because as you say 80% of your budget comes from grant aid versus Generated let's from Texas. Let's say sixty percent. Okay. Sixty percent comes from granting aid, and we raise forty. All right. So, so I'm saying what my first. I I can't speak. I wasn't there on the ground, but just from an observation point of view, if the premier of a country says continue striking, that means it's standing with. That would indicate to me that it's standing with the workers. In the context, it was said, uh, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think it's more along the lines of, um, you know, you expect your leader to to try and resolve it instead of Correct. putting it Correct. on the people, right? That's Correct. that's Correct. I I can see how that would would come across, especially when the person that you lot are you know really demonstrating against is is overseas, technically. Well, the the powers that be, you know, so what are some of the possible uh, next steps, depending on if if this meeting doesn't go uh, the way that, that you guys would like it to go? Okay, so we will meet again, and we will strategize, and we will go forward. But we are hoping that at least we, they will come up with solutions. Uh, I would have given them options, come to us with something at the table so that we can negotiate going forward. That's what we should do, negotiate. Um, being a part, member of the executive, uh, Premier Farrell Taylor, should know that this is what we want to do and should come to us with options, come willing with open mind for us to discuss and see how we should move forward. Yeah, because it's going to be, yeah. I, I know it's going to be difficult because if, if you're keeping track of the uh, demonstrations happening in the UK right now, you know, they're not even negotiating with their own unions. Uh, at this current time, um, and you know they're, they're heading into the first nurses strike ever, so it's it seems as though that's kind of the policy across the across the board right now with the current government over there, which is to kind of not negotiate at all, um, just give a take it or leave it sort of mentality. So, do you do you think that um, that would would trickle down here through this governor? Uh, we have to wait and see. But but let me say, though, that our last pay increase was in 2017. When I was president then, we also 
requested from the from the premier back then, and we received a three percent increase in 2017. And we're back again asking, but I'm, I must say that during that time, the UK public servants have been receiving one percent per year. So we should at least get something. We we, we got absolutely nothing. So it's not. So it's, it's not only. What is actually? It it is very much. It's discrimination, for want of a better word. Mm-hmm. Because if they get one percent, we should get something. No, you're coming to, after we've got nothing over the last six years, or even before that, prior to that, between 2017 and prior to that, our last increase was, was 10 years before that. And they were, in, they were enjoying one, their salary increase capped at 1%. We got zero. So it's unfair for you to come now to say that 10%, is, the asking of 10% is basically unreasonable. Uh, that, that, that's just not good. And... We, we see that they're also proposing for them to get 3% going forward. So we should get something. Yeah, we're So they're getting 3% going forward and maybe a 1%. But right now we're getting absolutely nothing each year. So what we're saying, we should get something. We should not discriminate if we are, if we are, say, we are also British citizens, we should be treated the same. Agreed. And get salary increases as well. Yeah, I I agree. Yeah. And, um, you know, we we definitely wish you well and we hope that, um, you know, that the situation does uh, resolve itself because I know one thing, um, nobody likes to take industrial action. Nobody is excited about it. And, you know, it's it's kind of like last resort. So I really, really hope that the meeting goes well. And that you you guys are able to kind of uh, find common ground there without having to progress anything. Yes, I'm hoping for myself. And I'm also hoping that we see now that there's no further discrimination. If I may even want to even say, we have technical officers, technical corporation officers among us. And these are mainly persons coming out of the the UK. And they receive... So you may find somebody who's on the same level like yourself, and they're receiving 10% uh, salaries greater than you are, and they also have a cost of living allowance attached to their salaries. Mm. So that, the fact that you're sending your person out to work in Montserrat, and you're attaching a cost of living allowance, it means that they fully well know that the conditions on Montserrat are deteriorating and the, the, the disposable income is, is insufficient. So then you should know that definitely we should get something on our salaries. Uh, the budget for TC is practically, let's say, a, a million, and that's what we're asking for for increases. So um, cut the TC budget and give, it, and, and give it to us in salaries because most of the time, the majority of time, many of these TCs, we have to hold their hand. So it means... If we have to hold their hands, stop the hand holding, let our do our do our work and pay us these salaries so that we have disposable income. And I also wanted to point out that when public servants in Montserrat we rally for salary increase, there's a ripple effect. So you have more spending power, we're able to spend more money with the private sector, statutory bodies get an increase. Pensioners get an increase, taxes, but everybody wins. Taxes, the pay increase, uh, the Social Security Fund is currently, uh, the last couple of reviews indicated that it will go belly up in 2025, 2026. So it's important that we maintain that Social Security uh, network, the social network, because we can't afford for persons to drop below further below the poverty line because when you retire you need to have your pensions and and that sort so more money will go into the social security fund um as well as we're able to have money to pay our bills 
and other other commitments. But what is it we're really asking for? It's for new monies in order to have this increase. But if there's no new monies, we have the CC budget, which we, they can use, and the fact that they ring fence it, it's, it's a special treatment. So release that ring fence and give it to Governor Monsack to raise salaries, which is, which is very, very important. So let, let, me, <laughs> let me ask you this, sir, Madam President. Um, how far are your members prepared to go? As far as we need to go, because persons, it's hard. It's hard. From, from every week, I have to be making representations for somebody in terms of uh, a, 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 a private sector organization requesting for them to just extend the little courtesy to a member, give them some time to be able to pay their bill. I have to make a representation to some banking institutions asking to, you know, ease them a little bit so that they'll catch themselves and follow up on their bank banking payments for their houses and so on. We have persons who are falling through the cracks in social in, in terms of um, persons with disability. We lost two persons within our membership to disability because there's no inclusion in our system for persons with disabilities. So we travel around the world and we see persons with disabilities who continue to work. So our legislation needs to be adjusted to include those persons. And one particular person specifically has fallen through the cracks. And I still have to do my best to make sure that person is still um, living decent. So it's it, so many issues, a wide range of issues, and we really need to have them started. And uh, I can say that persons view the approach of the present governor as divide and rule because we would have received an email from her sometime, I think it was Monday, indicating that she was working with the financial secretary, the deputy governor, and government to try to resolve some of these issues. However, why are you, the union make rep made a representation and you are going to now send an email to each individual civil servant as opposed to the union. We made this request united and unitedly and we're going to continue to be united. I will not going to allow anybody to separate us. It's important that we remain united, like in the strength of the union. Unity is power, and we remain strong. We will continue to make strong going forward. We are not going to be separated at all, at all, at all, at all. Actually, there was one issue when we were going to make a dem the demonstration on Thursday, last week, Thursday, where it was reported by members that a member, a minister, basically tried to intimidate or intimidated some of our members, telling them, okay, the next time they wear black or try to participate in some such event, he's going to lock them out of the office. And if, if they, he basically questioned them, saying, saying to them, if they don't know that he could have them fired or have them paid on the 27th of December. And I had to issue a warning letter to the minister because we're not going to tolerate that at all. Under no circumstances are we going to tolerate that at all. And the membership must remain feel safe and remain safe. And it's a bit disappointing for that particular minister to do that because he, he himself has contributed to trade unionism on Monster Act. So it was very disappointing for him to take that stance or try to intimidate the membership that way. All right, well, let me, let me say this. Um, in Bermuda, a minister can't <laughs> talk to civil servants like that. So there is some, something here we call like the general orders that, that mm -hmm. basically says a minister can't be talking to. The PS is the one who talks to. not saying anyone should talk to any um, worker like that, but it's definitely other place for a minister to, to take that stance. I have some um, greetings here from you. From um, from Sister Nadine Brown. Henry. 
Yes, well, Henry. Said, Meeting that, Henry, right. Yes. That, so that, I, that's, I want to take this time to shout out my, my trade union sisters and brothers in Bermuda. Mm -hmm. uh, Honorable Jason here, what he was also once the president of the Bermuda Public Service Union. Mm -hmm. Brother Ahmed Summers, who is currently the president, and also to Sister Nadine Henry, Sister Linda Bogemeiser, and Brother Joseph Dossery. He is an illusion by birth, but he also lives in Bermuda. Mm -hmm. um, those are persons I remember off the top of my head. I, I must have gotten, forgotten some one, but don't hold me, hold to me. Um, just sending greetings to all my sisters and brothers within the union there. Yes. Um, as you know, Brother Jason Haywood is now Minister Jason Haywood. Right. He's um, the Minister of Labor, you see? Yes, right. Labor and Economy. Mm -hmm. Um Nadine Henry, she's well, Nadine Braun Henry. Nadine and Jason are actually cousins. Okay. Well, whoa, cause she's my cousin too, so we're related to her. Um, okay. But I, I say that to say back in January 2000 and, uh, 2015, the Dayan government um, was sent a letter to the union saying that they are going to dock the dock. 10% pay from the unions. They didn't ask. They didn't negotiate. They told them, we're going to deduct 10% pay from the union, the union members. And then Brother Jason A was then the, not only the head of the BPSA, he was the head of the Trade Union Congress. Right. And... He had to rally all the unions. I mean, he literally have like nine unions here. He mm -hmm. rallied all the unions to say, listen, either we lay down for this or we stand up and we stand up together. Perfect. So so for three days straight, they had what what, what we called her Occupy Cabinet, where you had cabinet grants. And um, all the union members, except for essential services, meaning police, um, on duty police, I should say, police, firemen, and um, the utility yeah, workers. Right. Mm. Every every union occupied cabinet for three days. Like nothing was get like zero was getting done in this country from Correct. from public service mm -hmm. workers. I mean, mm -hmm. some people were upset. Oh, the bosses ain't running. Oh, the fares not running. Oh, my children are out of school. But we had to stand together. And yes. the government mm -hmm. had to capitulate. Have to stand together. Yeah. So what and we did some of that last week. We did some of that last week. Right. So, right. I mean, your your situation is slightly different where, from what I understand, your government is trying to do, but you have the FCDO hanging over you, using this divide and, divide and rule thing to try to get you all to lay down. And as, as Brother Duane said earlier, even in England, the, the unions are saying, no, we're not laying down anymore, right? Okay. Just this week, we're finding out about in England where um, they spent billions of dollars on PP, wasted money, giving contracts to their own friends. Okay. Right? They have no problem spending billions of dollars and saying, oh, we made a little mistake. But they got a problem giving the workers of Montserrat money. Exactly. The thing is... The thing is, we have lost some of our major institutions, like I said before. And we, so we're looking for you to help build us up so we can go back onto our own. Like, so give us a proper ferry, give us a proper jetty, give us a good hospital, so that we could start to function on our own to do, to do, to do things. We see what they did with St. Helena. Why are we so different? Uh, so we, you, I think you know why we're different. Yes. Okay, I think right, you know and, why we're different. Right, and I'm going to use the R word. We, we see it as being racist. It's racist. They don't like to hear, but it's it's, it's a fact. It's being racist, right? Because and, I mean, on, sorry. here's the thing, right? That, and I'll I'll say this because we're winding up. FCDU. What it does? What does the D stand for? Development. Which so country? Right. So which which island? Which in, uh, of the Caribbean or Atlantic Caribbean overseas territories? Which one are they actually doing any development in? And the thing is, if you want to claim us as your children, parents look for their children. And that is exactly what they're supposed to be doing, looking for your children. Make sure that they have the essential tools and are equipped to do what they have to do. 
and then they've fallen short big time on there, that. There is not one island, Bermuda, Anguilla, Montserrat, Turks and Caicos, Cayman Islands, or Virgin Islands, where there's any substantial development from the FCDU beyond Correct. trying to keep us in check. Right. And yeah. so when they say, well, we don't have the money and you're like, hey, well, how did you all give this guy a billion dollar contract for nothing to show? Exactly. Exactly. And they gave Antigua quite a bit of money the other day. Mm -hmm. They, they gave Dominico money, money, too. But we'll, we'll, go to our, we'll go to our last break and then we'll come back and wind up. Okay. Shopping online for large items like Peloton bikes, kids' electric cars, and TVs? Don't get stuck by high shipping prices. At Zipex, we deliver the lowest rates measured by weight, not to mention, so you don't have to worry about paying more for an item due to its size. We will even deliver your large items to your door for only $5. Avoid the sting. Sign up for your free Zipex account and U.S. Delaware tax-free address today at www.zipex.bn. Ho, ho, ho. Did you know that Friends of Hospice will be hosting a Lights of Love Christmas draw this year? You'll have a chance to win up to 15,000 in prizes with only 2,500 entries being accepted. The last early bird draw is happening on December 16th for a $1,000 Lindo's grocery voucher, so get your entry in today. Contact Friends of Hospice on 232-0859 or check out Friends of Hospice Bermuda on Facebook and Instagram. Lindos, why go anyplace else? Now back to Motion to Adjourn with MP Chris Famous and Dwayne Robinson. And welcome back to Motion to Adjourn. President Nokia, are you still with us? I'm still here. Yes, we wanted to just thank you and to, uh, you know, say that we appreciate you giving some of your time to uh, let the people of Bermuda know and our listening audience, you know, what's going on in our sister island and, you know, giving us an update on the plight of the uh, unions in Montserrat. So thank you so much. Is there yes, anything... Thank you too. Opportunity. <laughs> yes, sorry about that. Is there anything that you'd like to say uh, to the people of Bermuda before we um, wrap up? Any uh, last words? Okay, yes, we have to always remain strong and make sure that you continue to support your union. It's very, very important because unity is power. And being dependent territories alike, uh, one thing my hope is, is that we are able to Stand up, stamp out discrimination, racism, that prejudice no longer exists among us because it is real. It is real that we see they're trying to throw us back from time to time into colonialism and that's not what we want. We have been there. We are supposed to be going forward and we don't we want to see progress. Hmm. Progress and not retrograde. We want to be retrogressing. We want to be progressing forward. And before I leave, I also want to say hello to some of my postal colleagues there. I'm not sure if the, the Minister of Post is still the Honorable Wayne Ferber. Yes, he is. No, no, it's now, um, that's now Minister Vance Campbell. All right, yes. And also uh, Wayne, Alan Wayne Smith, who was once the acting PM, PM, PMG, Postmaster General. Yeah, he's, he's now in a different position right yes and also susan moore williams she once acted as a pmg she's as a lawyer by profession if yeah. i can recall she's not the pmg now the now the pmg no. is mr sam richard hazel richard hazel what i think it is so, no sam sam ben sam brangman is the pmg oh, yes. now sam brangman yeah sam brangman he's, he's the authority right so just giving a shout out to all of them and to everyone in bermuda thank you remain focused and firm and I pray and hope that our communities continue to develop and progress and we'll do all what we need to do to stand firm and ensure that that does happen. And we wrap that up with one word, two, three, two, three words here in Bermuda. Open your ears to me. United we stand, divided we fall. Divided we fall. All right, all right, sister, president. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. <laughs> And you have been listening to Motion to Adjourn with MP Chris Famous and Dwayne Robinson, JP.
You're locked to Power 95, Bermuda's big station at 94.9 FM, a Bermuda Broadcasting Company station. Playing your favorite jams real loud. They gonna keep me tuned in. Yo, what's happening? It's the big boss. We get 